Hey everybody, so I saw this research paper and I wanted to make a video on it because to me there's a lot to unpack with this particular research paper. So the research paper is called Creative Agents Empowering Agents with Imagination for Creative Tasks and it comes out of China. And so uh, as I, so I've reviewed several papers and uh, research papers from China at this point on this channel and they, like every other one that I've researched, uh, and gone over on this channel so far, all of them have to do with Minecraft. Uh, and then so it's very specifically uh, about maybe eight, nine months ago, there was a research paper put out by China and it's called, uh, the paper is called Ghost in the Minecraft. And then in the Ghost in the Minecraft paper, they make an assumption and it's a key assumption that uh, it, the assumption is, is that if an agent is able to solve uh, essentially tasks within an environment like a simulated environment such as like minecraft that is um complicated enough where there's enough like complicated factors and variables within it that it can uh, mimic the real world that if a agent can solve and um go through problems on that level then it's the same like they, they consider it equivalent that uh if an agent can master minecraft then an agent can master the real world that it's like the same factors are needed uh and then so to me I, like i think that's an interesting approach overall um and then so if you're not aware there's a, a large amount of bans on china currently as far as like technology um especially around like gpus uh nvidia just <laughs> recently got called out like pretty hard like by the president specifically uh for uh like this ban and enforcing this ban and then so in this sense, China has like limited compute resources that they have access to when it comes to these things. So their research has to be very narrowed and specific. And then so it's always interesting to me that they've been on the same research track for like for like a year. Uh, they haven't deviated from it, um, which is reinforcement learning and then reinforcement learning via like this Minecraft track uh, and getting these agents to do things. And uh, like I, so I look at it kind of like if you look at Cuba with cuba the embargo has been on cuba for like 80 years uh, but and so they cuba invests like less than any other country in the world when it comes to healthcare. but they rank sometimes even number one in some areas of healthcare. but usually like number two three in the world as far as like their their health care even though they're like zero on like the scale of um their amount of like actual like revenue and dollars that they're putting into it because they, they can't um but so with certain things and i think like ai is definitively one of those things there's ways around and creative ways around any sort of like embargoing that you do uh, and that seems to be what's coming out of china but so let's talk about the paper very specifically um because it's a breakthrough in and of itself to me uh for a few reasons so creative agents empowering agents with imagination for creative tasks um and then so this is along again like along the same lines of research that I've seen with uh, a lot of the papers that come out of China where it's um, creative agents inside of Minecraft uh, or agents within Minecraft and then so this difference with creative agents is uh, so they use a model of experts architecture uh, which is again common and then they have uh, like a, a creator and a generator uh, like like uh, or like an imaginer um, and like an implementer um, and then so um, the imagination and the imaginer is, of course, controlled by a mathematical equation. <laughs> and then so uh, here is the mathematical equation for imagination that they come up with, where the G is uh, an imagination of a task outcome. Uh, and then they essentially uh, solve the equation. Uh, and then by solving the equation there, then you get generative imagination. Uh, and then the cool thing with this is that the um, they, they tested it a few different ways, and this is like kind of a surprising outcome to me. Um, they, uh, the imaginer, they test it as a, a visual agent um, as well as an LLM model. So they use diffusion models and LLM models. Um, and then so uh, in that instance, it would be uh, in, for the diffusion models, it would be like uh, they're creating images. And then so the LLM model would interpret the image that the um, diffusion model is creating and then go off of that. And so. Uh, I think it's that's an interesting component to play around with within this but so going throughout the paper you can see essentially outside of that it's uh, just their benchmarks and then they use essentially like an elo rating system uh for their main benchmark uh which is interesting so uh elo being like how 
would the uh, model is performing within the game. Um, and then so uh, with this imagination method, they're able to like beat every other method that they've utilized before. Uh, and then another thing that just pointing out with their research papers that you'll notice, it's always like it's always like ChatGPT 3.5 or, or ChatGPT 4 um, <laughs> that they're using in the research papers. Like it's which is interesting to me too because there's a a, a lot of like models. There's a few models that have come out on the China side, but they're still like like uh, that are supposedly equivalent to GPT 4 or in some instances are superior, but they're still using GPT 4 and GPT 3.5 in the research papers. Um, so just interesting pointing that out um, overall, but so uh, within this, it's uh, it's they call a, a critic and imaginer, um, and then so the critic uh, like evaluates the imagination imaginer's uh, results, um, and then they go through and then they benchmark there, uh, and then it's just essentially giving their benchmarks. Uh, it makes sense. So likely they're using GPT because of the GPT four V capabilities, um, and then uh, which would make sense. Um, but they again, they have models that are, are that are uh, have vision capabilities as well. Um, and then so at the very end, past the references, uh, they give a detailed appendix section, which is what I like about these papers as well. Uh, and then it's like their full methodology, like all of the prompts they use. So you can reconstruct th like this, uh, all of the hyperparameters, uh, including on the diffusion models. So like. They give their full methodology and explain out their methodology in extreme detail um, within this paper as well. So uh, it's kind of, it's really easy to replicate their findings. And then all of their findings, again, it's all uh, Minecraft and reinforcement learning. Um, and then so, again, I just, I, uh, I'll end on that note that I like, I think that the fact that China has limited resources and they're always going all in on reinforcement learning um, it says a few things to me about like on that end. I know that there's a lot of debate over like reinforcement learning. Uh, there's a recent tweet that came out from someone that's prominent in the AI community that said like uh, reinforcement learning is a dead end. Um, I, I, I don't think it is. <laughs> I think it, reinforcement learning is like the uh, uh, it, it's going to replace data training to me. I don't I, and I could be wrong, right? I could be putting that out on this video and then someone looks at it in 10 years and like, oh, this that guy's an idiot. But uh, that's my opinion right now on reinforcement learning is that like uh, reinforcement learning and synthetic data and everything around that that it, it will replace um, other methods in my opinion um, so I, I find this research intriguing I find this paper intriguing uh, and I find uh, the overall line especially with the the, the Minecraft line that uh, tends to be taken within these papers is what's most intriguing to me about this so if you like this type of content please like and subscribe thank you very much